So it's, so it's time for me to charge up this uh, emergency battery station, power station. We got storms coming here in, here, uh, in southern Indiana here in a couple of days. So I want to get this topped off for to be on standby before the storms hit. But it got me to thinking about the best way to charge up these batteries. Do I want to charge them up as a bank? <laughs> the cat doesn't count. Or do I want to uh, charge the batteries individually? I'm not sure which is going to be the best way. So I figure I'm going to start with charging up the bank as a whole first. See what the batteries voltage is individually at that point and then continue on charging them individually to see if I get any more juice out of the out of the bank as a whole. When I was doing the test previously, the uh, video or the uh, the uh, batteries were sustaining about a three point, or the battery bank I should say was sustaining about a three point four volt across the bank itself, I believe. Whereas with the individual batteries, when I did a separate test, I was thinking the batteries were more along the closer to 3.7, 3.8. So we're going to conclusively define which is going to be better to charge up this uh, station. Is it going to be better to charge up the station individually on individual batteries or from the bank as a whole? So I'm going to start by getting everything set up using this Power Queen uh, Life Pro 4 battery charger that I picked up. Not too crazy in, in regards to how fast this will charge up the bank. I'm, I'm all about low, low and slow, right? To not to cook the batteries too long or too fast. So long is better than fast to sustain the battery cells. So we're going to uh, hook all this up, let it start charging, and we'll see how long it takes to charge, and then we'll start checking voltages once we get everything topped off. And then we plug in the charger and she now begins to charge. So we're going to, have, we're going to check back here in a little while to let this all top off and we'll start taking some readings. All right, everyone, it's been 24 hours since I put this Power Queen 20 amp charger onto the bank. And as you can hear, it is still running. So we're going to allow this charger to finish topping off this bank and then we're going to start taking some measurements. While waiting for the charger to top off the batteries, I did pick up this 50 foot cable from Menards here in Jeffersonville, Indiana. The cable is rated for 20 amps and it has the 20 amp plug on it. So I have that cable plugged into the right outlet here on the inverter itself. And then I also picked up a three way splitter. This will allow me to run the refrigerator, the freezer, and all the other electronics upstairs. And then in the winter time, should we have a blackout, the inverter has the second outlet on it and I can plug in the furnace into the second outlet to keep the house warm in the winter time. Okay, so after a period of time to allow everything to top off, which it has, the charger is now in standby mode. So we are going to start taking some measurements here. First, first off, we're gonna do the bank as a whole to see where we're at currently right after charge there was a period of time where i did allow the bank to balance out itself so let's see what we have right now coming off of the bank so on the so on the on the bank itself we are at 13.98 volts dc 13.98 volts dc so since it has been on, since all the batteries have been connected together for a period of time, the voltage across each of the batteries should be 13.98 volts, but we are going to double check here by taking the batteries and disconnecting them and checking out the voltage on them individually.
Okay, checking the voltages from right to left, starting with the one closest to the camera. 13.95 volts. Second one in. 13.95 volts. Third one in. 13.95 volts. And the fourth one in. 13.95 volts. So the individual batteries have the same voltage, which makes sense because they have been allowed to balance each other off in the last 12 hours or so. So now the question becomes, can we get more juice out of them? I don't think so, but we're going to find out. And she is charging. Battery on the far right at this time, and only the battery on the far right. The charger is pumping in 14.41 volts. And she shut off at 14.3 volts DC. So I've got a little bit more out of it, not much though. Battery number two, well the second one in anyway. And it shut off also at 14.3 volts DC. Battery number three, or third one in I should say. Thirteen point three. And the last one. Nope. Wait a minute. Let's try this again without the other batteries hooked up to it first. Strangely, this last battery on the bottom shelf, the fur furthest from the camera, is charging more than the other three batteries. It's currently at 14.06 volts DC. So, I don't know if it's going, I shouldn't make a difference, but I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery from the post. As you can see, there's nothing on the post besides for this single battery. It should be near the same voltage as the other three batteries, but it is not. It's actually on the positive, it's actually above the other three batteries, which isn't a bad thing. But it makes you wonder why this one is doing better than the other three batteries. Probably just the guts, the uh, electronics, the... Uh, Internal tolerances, things like that's probably allowing it to go a little bit longer than the rest, or allow it to be a little bit, allowing it to be charging a little bit more than the rest. So we'll do it this way. Now the voltmeter is still showing 14.56. Now I just start. Now I just finished charging. Fourteen point zero nine volts, so slightly more than the other three batteries. What two tenths of a volt more than the other three batteries? So it reminds me of horseshoes and hand grenades. It's pretty close. I'll let it go. <laughs> so. Let's get everything hooked back up here. All right. Let's check that bank voltage one more time here. So before I 
went through and topped off the batteries individually. The bank as a whole was reading at 13.98 votes, I believe. Now it's at 14.09 votes. But again, horseshoes and hand grenades. I'm not going to miss that two tenths of an amp. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll eat that one. We're, we're good with that. And then, no more Sparky. I picked up an actual tester for DC voltage, and I'm going to I'm going to use this to actually. So I'm actually going to use this to charge up the capacitors on the inverter before I actually connect the inverter back to the bus here. No more sparks. So if most people, when they use a vote tester like this to, to test for voltage on a DC circuit, for example, most people use this guy like if you were connecting the negative side of a battery, like I'm doing right here, to the positive side of a battery. And when you do this, the light lights up because you're, because it's detecting all, in, it, in this case, 14.1 volts or whatnot. That's how most people use these testers. However, what these testers actually do is check for potential between two inputs. So for example, if I hook up this aggregator clip onto the bus, and then I touch the probe to the back of this inverter, if the inverter capacitors are in need of electricity, the light will come on momentarily. And then once the light goes off, now we know that the inverter is fully charged up. So now I can hook up the bus to the inverter without causing any sparks. This is the more proper method of hooking up an inverter to a battery so you don't cook your battery or your inverter because this will allow you to draw a minimal amount of current into the inverter. And that visual reference is awesome because that allows you to see when the inverter is topped off enough to where you can hook up the bus to the inverter. So this is the proper way, though the sparks were cool. And with that, the inverter is back onto the bus. And the emergency power system is ready to go for the next power outage. So that's it with this video. And as you saw, there was a difference in voltage between what the bank saw at 13.98 volts compared to what the individual batteries saw at 14.1 volts. And yeah, I went through and topped off the individual batteries, but to do that, you have to disconnect them from the bus, which is doable, but I don't think that's really practical. So going forward, I will just leave the uh, batteries connected to the bus entirely, and I will, I will instead just disconnect the inverter to allow me to charge up the bank as a whole, and that will be a lot less uh, troublesome and eventually, I will get a cutoff switch, probably somewhere in this section right through here, that will allow me to disconnect the inverter from the bank without, without actually having to uh, unbolt anything. And then I can plug in this Power Queen uh, 20 amp charger. So I'm just basically at that point, I'm just flipping a switch, unscrewing one of these nylon nut covers here, or nylon nuts here clip on on the positive over there, clip on the negative over there, charge up the bank off of the, off of the charger here, and then, and then the only thing left to do at that point is to put the nut back on, turn the switch back on. Well, actually, before I do that, I would then use this guy to recharge the capacitors on the inverter before I flip that switch. There you have it on this video. I hope you find this information educational, informative, and maybe a little bit entertaining as well. No sparks this time though. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you on the next video.